Okay, everybody, we are back at the Disneyland Resort, and I am an annual pass holder, and I have not been here in almost two and a half months, which is like, for a pass holder, that's too long. Like, you can't not go to the park for two and a half months. So, I'm excited to be back. Yeah, we're gonna go and enjoy ourselves at the Festival of Holidays, and um, look at all the Christmas decorations that we haven't seen yet, and have some fun. Today is also, it's going to be the first day of winter, so I feel like that's why it's really cold. Oh my lord, is that the line to get in? This is to California Adventure. What is happening? Let's just take our shortcut. No, just kidding, it's a four hour wait. Anyway, today is also um, the day after all the military passes expire. So everyone knows that every year, December 19th, military passes are done for the year. So today it was gonna be our trial run of you know how many um, non-annual pass holders are here, unless you're like the signature, or pr signature plus or premier passes are the only ones allowed in now. DCA, as of right now, is more crowded than Disneyland, or at least, to get in. Um, so let's see what is going on. I can't imagine that the Festival of Holidays is drawing that many people in. It's just food. Like, I love food more than anybody. But I mean, come on, this is, this is cray cray. Going into the suggestion box is to have an yeah. AP line at Disneyland like they do at Disney World. Definitely at Disneyland you should consider doing an annual pass holder line because it kind of sucks when we have like, you know, like the biggest annual pass and pay a buttload for it at the beginning of the year, but we still have to wait in like a 30 minute line to get into the park with all the with all the riffraff. The only real reason as to why it took so long to get into the park today is simply because no one really is an annual pass holder. Like most people have the deluxe or the Southern California one. Um, so unless you're like the highest annual pass holder, which is like a thousand or the fifteen hundred dollar one, um, you can't get in the park for the next two weeks. So everybody that is getting into the parks today are people who are doing single day passes. Um, so everyone has to get their picture taken before they get in. Um, so that was what was taking so long was every single person had to have their picture taken to get into the park. We're still waiting on the magic bands to come to Disneyland. We have tested it before. We know the system's in place and it recognizes the magic bands, but we still don't have the magic bands. Come on, Disney, get on to California. Let's see, we got Festival of Holidays. It is gonna be going until no, January 7th. There's so many things to do. There's a bunch of photo ops, like one with Pluto. We are absolutely starving, so we're gonna get a head start on the eating today. So we got the toffee pudding and the beef short rib. That was it, joy to the sauce. The toffee pudding is honestly one of the most amazing things I've ever had. It's like Christmas in your mouth. Mm. Now we got the beef short rib. You know what? If Disney had housing where I could just like live in this bush, I would live here and then try and steal all the food because it is so good. Oh my god, wind! Does anyone else hate wind as much as I do? Because I freaking I hate wind. Wind is like my mortal enemy or immortal enemy. I don't know. Okay, so we got the Nashville hot fried turkey and the beef tamale, which came from Spicy Celebrations. Heck yeah. Over at the Holiday Duets, um, we got literally one of everything. So we have the mac and cheese, the polenta with crab, the butter and jelly cheese tarts, and the Mickey and Minnie cookie along with not a hot chocolate flow, a warm chocolate flow. So we indulged at the holiday of duets, and I think we might have to wait until next time to finish the rest of the food. So when I was a kid, because I was Jew-ish, I was obsessed with playing dreidel, and they have the character-themed dreidels. I think that is the cutest thing on earth. They got all the Hanukkah stuff here, like how fun. Mostly kosher. We're 
just trying to soak in the views since at least the good majority of this is gonna change. On January 8th, it all closes. Ariel's Grotto is gonna be closed. Cove Bar's closed. Screaming closes. Um, all the games that go along the whole entire boardwalk. Um, they're gonna put in the new ride, which replaces Malibuomer, which I'm so sad about because I just want them to put back the Malibuomer. That was like my life. Even as a kid, I thought that was the funnest ride ever. And then, no, they took it out. <laughs> Screaming my whole childhood. I've been he I've come here since opening year in 2001, and this is all I've ever known. They changed it once before, where most I think most people don't even know this that the Mickey actually used to be on the loop. And now it's just the sun, and then the sun used to be at the entrance of the park, and also the sun used to be on the Ferris wheel. And then they kind of like flip flop them, which is, I don't understand why, but they did. Um, and then they took out the Malibuomer at that time, and um, yeah. So for all you kids that don't know what the original looked like, this is not the original Paradise Pier. And World of Color wasn't here either. It was an actual like, just like there wasn't all this stuff. I don't know, maybe you can see it, but you can see like all the mechanics in the water. That wasn't even there. Um, that came like, what, 10 years later? Paradise Pier is going to be transforming and it, the last day it's all gonna be open is January 8th of 2018. So it's all, the whole entire pier side is gonna be different. So like Errol's Grotto, Cove Bar, Screamin', um, they're gonna add a new ride where Malibuomer used to be and a whole bunch of stuff is gonna be changing in the area. Um, and I know that this has like some speculation that kind of leads most people to think that it's not gonna be California Adventure anymore. So I don't know, are they really gonna make it like Hollywood Studios or are they gonna keep it like California Adventure because they're kind of taking the California out of California Adventure. We have all these like California themed rides that are kind of going away and they're like renaming everything so it's not Pixar, or it's gonna be Pixar Pier instead of Paradise Pier. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm wild about this or not. I know a lot of people are really excited about it. I wasn't excited the first time they did the transformation, so I don't know if I'm excited for the third transformation, or second transformation. Like, Goofy Sky School, but most people don't remember. It used to be Mulholland Madness, and Mulholland Madness is this famous street in LA, um, that's just like a crazy street. And that's the whole reason they named it Mulholland Madness when it originally opened, then they changed it to Goofy Sky School. The symphony swings um, weren't the symphony swings. They were actually inside a giant orange. It used to be called the Orange Zinger, and you'd be inside a big orange, like it was a huge orange, in, you know, reference to the orange fields that used to be here. There was an orange grove that used to be on this property, and just California in general has a large agriculture. And yeah, it, sm it would smell like oranges inside when you would swing around, and you'd hear bees. Um, Cove Bar wasn't even the Cove Bar at the time. I'm kind of sad that it's all changing for another time again. So we've changed it once before and they're changing it again. So it's not exciting. I don't know. Nostalgia. That is where all these planter boxes, that is where they used to have the Malibuomer. And the Malibuomer was awesome, but their whole reasoning for taking out the Malibuomer was because they put in Tower of Terror at the time. And they said, well, we have one droppy ride. We can't have two droppy rides. But to me, it wasn't a drop ride because it shot you straight up. I thought it was so fun. Um, it was super cool. It would You had a great view of the park. Um, and it only ever had like a five minute wait because everyone was too afraid to ride it. So to me, I thought it was an awesome ride. Um, but you know, they're gonna put in that new ride there. So at least they're doing something with the space now. This has always kind of creeped me out. So like, it's like a giant man. It's like a giant like, I don't even know what it is. What do you call it? Like a, a circus conductor? I don't even know what those are called. Um, but it's always kind of creep me out. I will appreciate him being gone. Who, this will be like vintage in two weeks. <gasps> a California screaming pin. For those of you pin collectors, um, they have a California screaming pin. Talk about sadness when even on the back of the hats, it says when it's gonna leave, it's like taunting you like, oh, your beloved childhood memory's gone. 
have fun. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out why they picked like brown as a hat. It's like, come on. Everybody knows that brown is just not a good color. We're on the hunt for like some actually cute screaming merchandise, not just like dirty brown screaming merchandise. I don't know what that's about. The pins are cute. But yeah, the hat was like poop color. I don't want a poop hat. Honestly, the crowds are probably gonna be bigger this winter as well. So if you're planning on doing one of your like, you know, yearly family trips out here, expect to have larger crowds. It's a lot more crowded than any other Christmas time I've experienced. Um, just because you, most of these rides are gonna be gone in like two weeks. So I think everyone gets that panic mode that they have to go to the rides and ride them before they go. It's actually sprinkling right now. I can't like stop blinking my eyes because it's kind of like raining almost. It's like misting, I shouldn't say raining. After going to Walt Disney World, <laughs> yeah, that's rain. <laughs> when it rains here, it's not even close to what rain is there. I will say, however, I have been here when it rains and it's worse than at Disney World because at Disney World, at least it's warm, but here it is like ice cold. Like it's like 30 degrees, plus it's raining. And then there's no indoor areas really because, you know, Disney World has prepared for the weather. We just really have 75 degrees and sunny all the time, so we don't have to worry about it. So there's no room to go indoors when it does rain. So you just kind of get to like suffer and have an umbrella or a poncho and be out in like the freezing rain. The carousel, that's gonna be gone. I believe that wasn't always um, Ariel's carousel. So that also had a transformation once upon a time, but now they're transforming it again. So that's not gonna stay the same either. And then now you got California Screaming. Oh, oh. This is so sad. This is so sad. measuring height right now and he had like at least like five or six inches to grow the reality 
he'll never get to ride California Screamin', ever. All because he's not tall enough. Grow faster! Hurry, you have two weeks to grow six inches. <laughs> like, the look on his face was sad, but like, I just, I don't, I mean, someone has to break it to him that he's never gonna get to ride this ride. I'll be that person. So, the guy working just said, have fun screaming. When it becomes the Incredicoaster, what, what are they gonna say? Have an incredible ride? Like, have a screaming good time. Like, what do you say? I don't know. They should just keep saying that you're gonna have a screaming good time. We don't know what's going on, but there's like nobody at the code bar. So, um, the fact that that's gonna be closing too, we're kinda like, okay, well let's go check out if they're letting people eat at the code bar. There's like nobody there. None of this will be the same. We're in line for the Cove Bar. Um, there's still a line, but it was pretty short. Um, given the circumstances, I thought because this is gonna be closed in two weeks, that this would be like a four hour wait. I mean, during the summer, like yeah, you could easily have over an hour wait here. Um, you can see they make the queue line like enormous because they know that there's gonna be tons of people waiting here. Um, but I'm kind of sad because all of this is probably gonna look different um, this summer. So in like six months, none of this is gonna look the same. This Ariel's Grotto is kind of meh. Like I've eaten there so many times. Honestly, Ariel's Grotto, if any of you guys are wanting to eat there and you've never eaten there, honestly, it's overrated. Um, I've done the character dining there. I've done the world of color package there and it is all way overpriced. The food was mediocre. Um, it reminds me of the uh, Trattoria. Still not a fan of that really either. Again, it's kind of like an overrated Olive Garden. Um, I think Olive Garden's better because at least you get like tons of free breadsticks. But um, yeah, really just going there for scenery and for characters. It's for the little kids, not really an adult place. So the Cove Bar is the place you go for the adultery things. Um, so I think they might actually do maybe an expansion of the Cove Bar. That's just like my theory. That's nothing nothing that's been talked about, nothing put into plans. But I think they're gonna be expanding the Cove Bar just because it's become such a popular spot and um, just because California Adventure has always been kind of geared more towards the adults, um, less kids. Um, you can get alcohol here, you can't get alcohol in Disneyland. Um, so Cove Bar is like the best place to go and get mixed drinks. I can't focus. Okay, so every time I come to the Cove Bar, have to, have to, have to, have, have to get the artichoke dip. It is so good. I don't know what they do. I'm not an artichoke or spinach person, but I mean, I could literally just like shovel this in all day long. It's so good. And then obviously, my go-to, I love it. It literally tastes like a smoked turkey leg. If you have not had this, oh my God, you have to get it. Like, it's a smoked turkey leg in liquid form. I love the smoked turkey, and he said that this one is like another version of that. Um, I was tempted to get it. Maybe if I get a second drink, I'll get that, but um, let's see. This one's like a sweet version of the smoked turkey. I got my beautiful watermelon margarita um, with the tahine rim. It is so good. If you're somebody who enjoys spice, like I love spicy things, but this is like a perfect kick. Like it's not overly spicy. I could have added more, but I didn't. Um, but it is so good. Bob was just over the intercom and the park is only supposed to stay open until nine o'clock tonight, but they just said for our convenience, they're gonna open the park until 10 o'clock at night. So they're adding an extra hour onto the park time, which I've never in my life heard happen. And then they said they're doing that because they're gonna show another viewing of World of Color, which will be at 9.30. Um, and there's one that starts in like 30 minutes, but they're gonna do another one. So cool, we get an extra hour in the park. Does that mean there's more fast passes available? Because they were all sold out. Not like, not officially. They already closed down for the night. Screaming, so can't go ride that anymore because of World of Color. Our most beloved show. 
Oh, and talking to our waiter, um, he said that the Coke bar will actually be open for a month and a half in April. Um, it's not gonna be just like the weekend that everybody was talking about, so that's not like a rush to get in. <laughs> a fun thing at Coke bar is that when you're here, um, you come in, they close about 7.30, but then World of Color, I don't know if you can read it, World of Color begins at 8.15. Um, well, right now, so it depends on the hours, but um, so right now it's 8.13, and at 8.15, right back there, will be World of Color. Um, and you're allowed to like go over there and watch, but only if you are already at the Cove Bar. So it's kind of like your special ticket. Oh, well that changed so quick. Look at this, how cute. Technically the rule is that you're supposed to like stay at your table, so you kind of want to request a regular table, but we asked one of the ladies and because it's kind of cleared out, um, we're allowed to go sit on the other side of the bar, but we have to sit, you can't stand. So we're gonna go head over there. almost like having like private dining. I've never seen this. from the Cove Bar is like, honestly, the best viewing that you can get. How amazing is this? Like, seriously. Unfortunately, people don't like always know their surroundings in certain places. And um, I had my camera out filming the show and uh, I'll show you guys a clip of it like right now. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> Every person that was in her group, like we're talking like eight people, noticed that I was filming and they all ducked under like they were good. Like they were like, oh wow, like we noticed you were doing that. We won't mess it up. And one of the like very like last person apparently didn't notice me and she just went right in front of me. I love Christmas world. I mean I love all the world of colors. I love the Christmas world of color, especially the goofy part. Everybody always knows everybody loves the goofy part. That's like the best one. Yeah, the trick is when you're at the Cove Bar, you want to get in there about like 7 or 7.15 in line and um, at 7.30 they close the bar and then you just sit there eat and drink. As long as you're willing to wait and aren't in a hurry for anything, I would say it's a very awesome thing to do for someone like me who comes like 45 times a year. Yeah, I love doing it. But if it's like your one and only time you're gonna be here, it might actually be a waste of your time because you do have to stay there for probably an hour and a half to two hours. So if you're trying to get stuff done, then it's not a good idea. But if you got time to kill, um, yeah. Do it, it's awesome. <laughs> this is so cute. Look, it's like the little ornaments, but they're little Mickeys. Just wanna, they almost could pass as Easter eggs in all honesty, but yeah, teach his own. Get your uh, adorable Christmas cards. Look at the tree. What if it doesn't? Oh my God, seriously? Okay, I love, I love the movie Cool Runnins. <laughs> and it's cool and Run cool Runnins is such an underrated Disney. Get yeah. it right. Get it up. 
<laughs> it's pop that time. Yes. <laughs> the lug nut cracker. Genius punny. Punny. The Santa clutch. Punny. Like a uh, one dream for forklifts. <laughs> 20 below zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. Oh, Disney, you kill me. The trolley wood. Oh my gosh. From the Mighty Trucks. Oh my gosh. From the studio that bought you the Mighty Trucks instead of the Mighty Ducks. <laughs> oh, they kill me. Look at that. Mighty Trucks. The Mighty Trucks. Oh, let's see. Buena Voltage instead of like Buena Vista. Oh, they're so good at this. Let's see. General parking, all cars admitted. You guys are so good. If you've never seen this movie though, you better go see this immediately. Disney, you are too clever. I mean, I know it's the first day of winter, but still, it shouldn't be this cold. The Christmas decor, I think, is a lot better. But, you know, everybody wanted to see Halloween this year. Because, I mean, it's Halloween. Three. One. Two. Three. One. Two. Three. See? Every third blink is slower. They're just so creative, aren't they? <laughs> if you're in Cars Land and you're bored one day, go to the hoods because, um, yeah, there is a hidden Mickey on every single one of the hoods. So, and they're like, they're really good at hiding them, like really good. Um, I think I have found every hidden Mickey on them except for two. So only two of the hoods I haven't found, or one of the hoods. Um, maybe this one's the second one. Oh no, I just found it right there. See that? As a hidden Mickey in the lace. Wow, that was really quick. <laughs> <gasps> Flows V8. Is it a dad hat? It's a dad hat. Oh my goodness, it is. The other day, I commented on somebody's post on Instagram that took a picture of the front of like a bunch of hats. And like all they showed was like this. And I asked, um, do you know if that hat is a dad hat? And their response was, no, it's more feminine. And I honestly started laughing because I don't think they understood that the actual style that this is, like you see the back, this style of hat, like it's the back part. This is classified in fashion as a dad hat. Like literally the title of it. It's like instead of a trucker hat, it's a dad hat. Um, it's not a baseball cap. It's, it's not a baseball cap. <laughs> it's a dad hat and I just thought that was the funniest thing that she told me no it's more feminine like she was I think she thought I was asking if it was manly I'm like no I'm literally asking what style of hat it is she told me it was a feminine one <laughs> I was like I got that it's purple I, I bet it's feminine um, I just wanted to know if it was a dad hat and so I'm gonna have to find that out for myself apparently because she did not understand the question there you go this is an example. This is not a dad hat. Okay? This is like a, see? Baseball hat. There you go. That's a baseball hat. So this is a trucker hat. A trucker hat. There's types of hats now. And apparently, nobody's been informed that there's such a thing as a dad hat. It's literally called a dad hat. Like, it's not, I'm not asking about the feminine side of the hat or the masculine side of the hat. I'm literally asking, is it a dad hat? I already have an egg-shaped head, so uh, well, we, can't, we gotta work with that anyway. But, I have to have dad hats. It is the only hat I can wear. And so that's why I had to ask her, is it a dad hat? And she goes, no, it's more feminine. <laughs> like, no, that's not what I'm asking. But okay, I had to just like it. I wasn't gonna say anything like, now's not the time for a lesson. So I figure, you know, maybe she's not the only one that doesn't know that dad hats are a certain style of hat. So I thought I'd create a PSA to all of you, just because they're four dads and they're not manly looking, they're just called dad hats. <laughs> an imperfection! Disney, an imperfection? Who are you people? This isn't Six Flags. Okay, for those of you who have to deal with friends and family members who use the restroom more frequently than they should, um, here's the thing. One, 
They're not allowed to drink any liquids throughout the day. Two, buy them some Depends. They got the silhouette kind. They can wear them throughout the day. You can't see it, totally discreet, so it's fine. Um, they could use it in line, like, oh, I gotta go now. Well, sucks you're not getting out of line. Okay, then they can just go. Like, it's like babies. Like, they just go wherever they feel. Like, I'm jealous. Like, come on. I would say I know more about the insides of the bathrooms at the park than I know about anything else. Just because I've, I've seen them five billion times. Everybody has to use them. I'm like a camel. I never go to the bathroom. Well, like, I'm like a camel in the sense that I never release water. <laughs> I don't release liquids. I think it is a non-firework night. Um, Lord knows why. They're canceled more than not um, at Disneyland. <laughs> and it's 9.30 right now and they're not going off. So they're not usually as good as they are in Orlando because here they have a noise ordinance curfew. Um, so, and usually for most cities around here, it's 10 o'clock is when it, like noise has to be cut off. And because here, unlike Orlando, the park is located literally right next to residential areas. Um, they, if they can't show them at 9.30, then they're not gonna show them at all. There is the beautiful 60 foot Christmas tree. Totally fake, not real. <laughs> For most of us who know Disneyland and are like annual pass holders, it's Christmas year round. Like to me, this doesn't feel any different. It, like, it feels like twice the amount of Christmas. They like double Christmas during Christmas. I mean, people are still angry and people are still yelling and kids are still crying, but like, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's more joyful. I was just watching a video the other day of Tomorrowland and we're talking like back in the day when Rocket Rods was a thing and I loved Rocket Rods. It was only open from what, 1999 to 2001? It spanned the year of the millennium and that was about it. It used to be up there. Um, this whole, the whole entire Star Wars, or Star Wars land, the whole entire Tomorrowland was like green and brown. I totally forgot about that. To be honest, everyone hated the look of it. I kind of liked it. I Oh, no maybe it's just me but it was like it was like gold like golden brown and green like an earthy green um like all this did not look like that um it was when they did like their major transformation and yes they used the people mover track to make rocket rods which i'm really sad that they're more than likely not going to bring it back i mean hello star wars land hi uh, make like a Millennium Falcon ride that's like a uh, rocket rods. Hello, gold. Um, but no. So instead, we just have a broke down people mover track where they can't put in a people mover unless they spend billions of dollars um, to redo what rocket rods broke. And then they won't put in another rocket rods. So I'm literally at a loss. I'm double sad in that case. So now I don't get my rocket rods and I don't get my people mover. So we just have like an empty track up there. It holds lighting and that's about it. One day I know they're gonna do something, but it's definitely gonna be after they spend the billions and millions that they're doing for all the other lands. But hopefully one day we'll either see a people mover or a rocket rod back here because rocket rods was a good ride. It was great, it was great actually. It wasn't just good, it was great. It was fun. So they do a ghost galaxy overlay for Space Mountain at Disneyland. Why don't they do Christmas overlay where like Santa is like flying with us and stuff, huh? Eh? Huh? You can utilize all the things they use for the Star Wars overlay that they have for the past year and a half. And you know, then it, you can like, I don't know, you'd be like flying with Rudolph through space. debate. Okay, we got AT-AT and we got AT-ATs. If you watch the specials, even the directors call them AT-ATs. But 
but in the movies they refer to them as I think AT-ATs. Yeah. So why are we calling them two different things? Almost every single person's like gone now, which is crazy. <laughs> like every yeah, I'm like, this is nice. I like this. Okay, I can I can do this. Yes, fireworks are always canceled. Everybody never come to the park. Thank you. <laughs> Just enjoy your day. Look at this. Everybody's gone. This is freaking no. Here you have it. The beautiful Christmas castle. Bam, bam. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Rainbow Thank Ridge. You. And if you haven't been on the California one, the G-Force trick is you gotta look at the goat. There's a goat right here and you have to look at the goat on the right hand side down the entire turn as long as you can. Look at the goat. Look at the goat. Look at the goat. And I was yelling goat trick, look at the goat on on um thunder. <laughs> After we did it, some guy you hear in the back of the train yells, Centrifugal Force! And I just thought that was funny. He's probably like a physics major. Bam, 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 bam. Okay. We're in downtown Disney. I want to show you guys the progress on Splitsville. So, as I talked about before, this right next to Build-A-Bear and Tortilla Joe's was, um, used to be House of Blues, but is now gonna be Splitsville. And they've done a serious number on the exterior, so I feel like their interior work is gonna be progressing really quickly. You guys see that? I'm ill, of course, I'm always ill. But yesterday we were successful at surprising Alexis, one of my best friends from Vegas, with a all expense paid vacation to Disneyland. And um, I had to leave yesterday because I just was feeling really terrible. Um, but today I feel I'm in more pain. I'm in more pain, but I'm not, I don't feel as sick. And I'm not even joking, yesterday every line was like over like 200 minutes and I was so confused. And today, I'm like, like look at this. Like, I mean given it's four in the afternoon, but like holy crap, like there's like nobody getting on the tram, like what is this? Would you like to wait in line to take a photo with a balloon? Of course I would. No, the line is no longer short if you are waiting inside the Tiki Room queue. It is long as skadditch because we all have to wait in a winding line. The trick is no longer a trick. Hi! <laughs> oh no! They're gonna die. They're gonna die. They're gonna die. Eskatit! Ah! All hands and arms inside the teacup. It has to be inside the teacup. Inside the teacup at all times. <laughs> While we cough and cry. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they look so sick. Look at their faces. There's no joy, there's no joy. And the spectacle that everybody comes to see during the holidays, the It's a Small World holiday overlay. Oh my lord. Like you can't really tell on the camera, but holy moly, this is a crowd. Well, I hope that you guys had fun with me. I will see you guys on the next one.